racing a little bit here. Uh, Connie Gibbon is a teacher at Democracy Prep here in Blackstone Valley. And, of course, Seth Andrew is the guy that started all this and a really, really smart guy and gets a lot of this stuff. But, you know, I only have a few minutes, so let's bullet point some of the changes that people would see with their scholars in kindergarten. The school day is longer, correct? 8 o'clock to 4 p.m. for kindergarten. And how will that grow as they grow up through the ranks? It gets actually a little bit longer for middle school. So middle school go till 515. 515. Yep. That way we have time for art and music and dance and theater and sports and all the things that you have to cut out if you get kids out at 3 o'clock. So the base time of 7 to 3, 7 to 2, 8 to 3 is academic. And then the other fun stuff is later in the day. Or you build it in, but you spread it out. It's built in and spread out throughout the day. But the idea is we don't have to make sacrifices. We have more time for kids to learn. What is your philosophy on a longer school year? Uh, we want a longer school year also. So about 60% of our students stay, stay with us through July. Um, we have a lot of holidays. Still with ac- academic rigor or kind of a more relaxed thing? A- everything we do is academically rigorous. Every single thing we do. I mean, we were talking about the difference of kindergarten scholars versus students. And, you know, Connie's day is not about, you know, color and fingerprinting. Um, there's art, but that's not the same thing. I mean, what do you do on a, a daily basis with your kindergartners? Every day we do two hours of literacy instruction, an hour of writing instruction, an hour of math instruction, and every afternoon we switch off between science and social studies. And you don't, it's not, uh, it's not, um, it's not Ms. Ms. Giblin's room. What is your room called? The University of Rhode Island. And the next room will be called what? Harvard or Michigan or University of Texas. In other words, it's not, it's not room 122 or Mrs. Giblin's room or Ms. Giblin's room. You name them by universities. You said it. Words matter. And the expectations we set for our five-year-olds are the ones that stick. And if they expect that they'll be able to go to whatever college they choose, then they're going to have that opportunity. I mean, it's just like, you know, I played in a golf tournament this year where, where you know, the, on the scoreboard, the divisions were the Brad Faxon division, the Dana Quigley division. You know, you were aspiring to at least that name. And, of course, it was all fun for adults we get that we're just playing around here. But you're, you're using that same concept Everything is driven toward a concept of that kind of achievement and or excellence. It's symbolic because our philosophy in education is really that the small things matter. And if we focus on the details, then we can, we can handle those things. So in Harlem, we don't have fights. We don't have school safety officers. We don't have metal detectors. And the reason is because we focus on the little things. So if a kid accidentally bumps someone in the hall, we're going to have detention that day. And that's because we need to let them know that those little things can't ever become big things. And so those little things like the words we you use. You went to Brown? I did. I did. The hell happened to you? <laughs> well, what what happens to a lot of teachers is they go to traditional schools and they see failure and they see get frustrated and they want to change the world. They want to do this kind of work, but they don't see the ability to do it in a traditional school. Do you think the education colleges that we have in America today are doing the right job? Um, overall, they're not, and there's there's exceptions to that. So Hunter College in New York, uh, there's a program called Teacher U, which was founded by some charter school leaders, and it is a phenomenal teacher education program. But most of the colleges and teacher education programs across the country we haven't learned enough yet from that program. Including here? Uh, including in Rhode Island. Uh, I went to the Harvard Graduate School of Education, but I'll tell you, I would, I would choose my teachers to go to Hunter any day over Harvard just because the quality and the rigor of the preparation that you can get in a, in a more focused program uh, that's philosophically more about getting every kid to be successful uh, than the latest battle between phonics Connie, and whole language. Connie, in uh, 20 seconds or less, why would someone want to teach alongside you at this school? Alongside me? I would provide support in whatever areas it is that I excel in, and I would hope that they would provide me with support in whatever areas they excel in. And everyone in our community, at our school, scholars, teachers, administration, are respected and celebrated for who they are and what they're doing. Um, I'm going to accept a long uh, standing invitation to come visit. I will we'll come back, take notes, and have you back, okay? Pleasure. Okay. We'd love to have you. Because the conversation's there. And anyone and who wants. There will be more applications available, correct? Anyone who wants to learn more can go to democracyprep.org, and that's for teacher applications and for families that want to enroll their children next year. All right. Seth Andrew and uh, Connie Gibbon, thanks. Appreciate your visit. Thank All you. Right. When we come back, we'll tell you what's next on the Daniel Show.